What is the best way to connect up your retro game system to an HDMI new panel display? We're gonna cover that in this video. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. So today we're talking about retro gaming. You may have already seen my video where we go through connecting the Super Nintendo up to a monitor or a new panel display. One thing that I noticed in that video was that the cable I was using to connect the display really didn't seem as high quality as I had hoped. I got it for a really cheap price. So the old adage, you get what you pay for, is probably a little bit true here where I thought I was making a good decision, but it turns out I think there might be some better options at a little bit higher price point. So that's what I wanna to cover today. Now, before we talk about the product that we're going to review, we need to talk about how I'm connecting this Super Nintendo up to this HDMI enabled panel. So this is what the adapter looks like. It says Nintendo 64 to HDMI. The reason it says Nintendo 64 is because the multi-port out on the Super Nintendo is the same as the N64 and it's the same as the GameCube. And and more or less all of them are interchangeable between those consoles. So today we're gonna hook up a Super Nintendo, but the devices that we're gonna review in this video would also be relevant for your N64 or your GameCube if that's what you wanna use. Or in my case, I have a Super Nintendo and an N64, so I'm gonna use the connector for both systems if it's better. But I don't know if it's better. We're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is the original one. It does have a switch to switch between 1080p and 720p. And now this one claims to use the component video output on the Super Nintendo to convert to an HDMI signal and then upscale it to your 1080 or your 720. I have suspicions to think that it's actually using the composite signal. So the composite is the single one yellow RCA connector and the component is the ones where you have the green, the blue, and the red RCA connectors. So that is the better signal to actually take and upscale. But I think this one, because of the jaggies around it, are making it kind of, it's not getting the best signal to start with. So let's do a quick look at what this one looks like, because it doesn't look that bad. If I look at it right now, it really doesn't look that bad. So let's drop into a game here. Now I've got a game that I've started already. We'll go to one player. We'll just look at a few key things here. So most importantly, if I go up over here, so what you can see or what you will notice, especially around Mario is just fuzzies around him. The definition is not quite that clear. The X has some blurriness there to it. And the whole world has a little bit of blurriness. Now it should be noted, I, in a previous video, I actually reviewed some of the connectors that you can use at a budget price. And I actually showed you that this is a pretty good connector and it is. It's actually better than some of the other ones out there. And if you bought this one, you can't go wrong. It's not bad, but there are better connectors, obviously, for a higher price. So we're gonna see if what a little bit of a bump up in price looks like as far as visual quality. Now, if I go into a level, let's just have a quick look and see what this level looks like. So you can see there's little bits of grainies on there. That's a little bit of noise and distortion. The apples there are a little bit weird. And then, but I mean, it's totally playable. So you get a good idea. Let's look at the cable that we want to try out next. And this is it here. This is by Hyperkin. Now, if you watch my other video, you know that we already did an unveiling of the Hyperkin controller, which was very high quality at a reasonable price point. So Hyperkin is a brand that is in the retro gaming space. They make some decent money off of making good quality components at a cheap price. So I have every reason to believe that this will actually be a really good high quality cable. Now the thing that makes this one potentially better than this guy is that this cable claims to use the S video signal to bump up to HDMI. And that's because the Super Nintendo actually really only outputs the S video signal. So even though this claims to be using the component signal, I don't think the Super Nintendo is actually putting a component signal out for it to use. So picture quality is pretty good, but I'm hoping it'll be a little bit better. So let's do a quick unboxing. And for this unboxing, we're gonna use my ridiculously sharp knife to cut these tabs here. Just one, it seems like. So we'll put that back on and see what's inside the box. 
So it has a little manual that tells you what the system's gonna do here, which I don't care about. Comes with the Hyperkin sticker, just like our controller, which again, I'm not a big sticker guy. And thank you for your purchase card, which, you know, you're welcome for my purchase. Let's stick that in there. Now this says that it supports GameCube, N64, and Super NES, and it's a seven foot cable for modern televisions. Let's see what's in the bag here. This is brand new, so we're just gonna unbox this here. So this is the USB cord for powering the device, I believe. Yes, it's good. It's actually a reasonable length. It's about six feet long. It's a micro USB cable, so it's kind of the older style cable, but it's good that it comes with that. And then, I'm not too excited about that, but let me get this undone here and then we'll talk about it. And then there's that cable there. So this end goes into your game console. It's got the little adapter box, and then over here, it's got the HDMI cord. Now, I, when I originally looked at this, I had hoped that it had an HDMI port there so that I could use whatever HDMI cable I want. Unfortunately, this is a fixed length, and it's about, it says it's about seven feet. I would agree with that. It's about seven feet long. And then let's just pull this off too, just for fun. And then that's the box there. The box says Hyperkin on it. It's reasonable quality. It's kind of a little bit of a cheaper plastic, but it doesn't matter. It does have a selector switch here to switch between 4.3 and 16.9, which will be handy because this monitor is actually trying to do a resizing, which stretches the image a bit. And that might be partially why we're experiencing a little bit of those graphical glitches and so on. It is a powered box, so it does require power, which we will do. And I guess all there is now is to hook it up and see what it looks like. So we'll unplug this first, plug that in. So right off the bat, I'm getting a warning from my monitor saying the current resolution is 720p and the recommended resolution is 1080p. You can see that right here. So this is outputting a 720p signal. There is no settings on here. There's no toggle switch to tell it to do a different output signal so this will do 720p and that is all according to that now i am currently in the 16:9 ratio but if i go flip this switch here it will switch to 4 3 so it'll stop stretching it and it looks so weird now i'm gonna get the warning again i'm gonna say close that's fine so for the comparison purposes, I'm going to put it to 16.9 just because the other one was in 16.9 as well. And that'll be important for doing the side-by-side -side comparison. So I'm gonna go like this. Right off the bat, I can tell you that this definitely looks better. There still is a little bit of a screen door looking effect to it, but it seems clearer. The color representation definitely seems sharper and Mario doesn't have that little ghosting around him. So it does seem better right now, but let's go into the game and see what it looks like. So you can see the menus and all of that. And then we'll bring Mario back around over here. So right off the bat for comparison purposes, you can see Mario up over here and I'll compare that right now side by side so you can see the two. It definitely looks more clearer. The edges are much, much sharper in this image versus the other one. Keep in mind that this one was my budget pick for somebody who's on a budget. Now, the Hyperkin is about double the price of this. So you would have to decide, do I want something that looks like this or am I okay with an image that looks like the image that this reproduced? This one does reproduce a very good sharp image, but it is nowhere near as clear and sharp as this one from what I can see there. Now let's go into a level here and just look at this. Look at that, that is that is definitely much sharper of an image, I would say. Now, for comparison, like this is definitely a whole lot clearer, but what I'd like to do, I'm gonna just switch it to the 4-3 ratio because that's how this game was played originally back in the day. And it's funny how we forget. It's funny how we forget about the square tube TVs. This is gonna give me a warning, so I just gotta be ready. There we go. So this was actually the image that we played on. It seems like you've got less of the game showing, but it's really not true. It's just been stretched or not stretched. Well, I'm not very good at the game. Like I never claimed to be good at this game. But one thing I can say is that it seems to be much clearer. You can see the texture now, and instead of it looking like fuzzy, grainy, kind of weird graphics, it now looks like it was intended to be there. Like that's part of the design of this now. So overall, I have to say, 
at double the price, the Hyperkin to me seems worth it. Now again, there are better ones out there than even this that one day we might review, but for today, I would say if you have a little bit more money to spend, this is definitely worth looking at picking up for your retro collection. Keeping in mind that this will work with your Super Nintendo, your N64, and your GameCube. So it's not like you're, I mean, you're spending about $40 but it's $40 to get three game systems working. Personally, I don't like swapping cables around, so I'm gonna look at buying a couple more so that I can connect all of my systems so that they're just ready to be turned on and used whenever I want. But we're going to do that final connection to the entire home theater system in a later video. Today, I just wanted to show you another product that's available. It's been around for a long time. Maybe you've already heard about it. Post in the comments below. Tell me what you think about this product. Have you tried it? Does it work well for you? Is there something in the same kind of price point around the $40 price point that you feel is better than the Hyperkin? Because so far, this is the best connection that I have found for your Super Nintendo game system. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.